Uh, thank you very much, and I'd like to thank uh, Ambassador uh, Dr. Hong Getz for a very comprehensive presentation of German and EU policy toward the uh, economic security. Uh, I particularly like uh, the three key words that uh, you presented, uh, promote, protect, and partner. I think these are very important keywords, which I think uh, we in Japan uh, share the same uh, uh, feeling about the, uh, how to, go, how to uh, achieve economic security. Uh, I'd like to begin, I have uh, several questions. Uh, I'd like to begin with a somewhat abstract question. Uh, as uh, you mentioned, and as we all know, that uh, uh, this world is faced with uh, several geopolitical tension threats. In the case of Germany, uh, Russia, and China are two maybe serious ones. And I just wonder how long this kind of situation will last. Very abstract question. How, how does you know, this uh, uh, geopolitical threat coming from Russia last? Next 20 years, 30 years? What about China? Uh, how does that uh, threat evolve from now on? Uh, this is, again, very abstract. You're, I'm just uh, like to hear your kind of uh, views on the possible future of these geopolitical tensions. Okay, that's the first question. And let me turn to a more concrete question. Uh, this is the uh, German uh, policy toward China. And uh, as uh, you correctly mentioned, China is a uh, main uh, economic partner uh, for Germany and for Japan too, as a matter of fact. Uh, we export a lot of our products to China and we buy a lot of you know, uh, products from China as well. And also we have uh, many Japanese companies, in your case German companies operating in China. So China is a very important economic partner, but at the same time, it's a, a, a security threat. So how do you make this balance? Uh, this again, somewhat uh, abstract question. Uh, in the U.S., if I remember correctly, uh, Jake Sullivan called it the you know, small yard, high fence kind of strategy to deal with the economic gains and uh, 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 geopolitical risk. So I just wonder, uh, like small yard, high fence strategy uh, is also a kind of strategy that the German, Germany is trying to deal with uh, China. Uh, the next question is about the uh, company's attitude toward economic security. Uh, after all, economic sec activities are conducted by private firms. So uh, I wonder how private firms in Germany or German firms uh, feel about economic security. Do they feel this is a very serious problem for them or this is something that the German government has to worry about? And, uh, German, German companies may not pay enough attention to this. And uh, I have seen some of the interesting results of a survey done on Japanese companies. Uh, large corporations, yes, they do realize the importance or seriousness of economic security. But, you know, uh, small and medium-sized firms, they don't really uh, uh, feel or understand the problem. Uh, and that is reflected on their uh, response to this threat. Uh, many companies are trying to figure out how to deal with economic security, which is uh, becoming you know, a very important issue very recently. Uh, some companies set up a special section to deal with economic security, but very few companies have done that. And I, I'd like to know how German companies are responding to uh, uh, rising economic security issues. And related to this is the uh, German government. Uh, do, does German government provide some kind of assistance to German companies to deal with uh, economic security issues? In the case of Japan, uh, Japanese government provide uh, like low interest rate 
loans or maybe even subsidies uh, to uh, 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 promote uh, resilience of uh, supply chains and so, and so on. So I just wonder how German government is uh, uh, providing assistance to German companies uh, to deal with the uh, economic security issues. And finally, uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, German-Japan relationship. Uh, you talked about the uh, areas that uh, these two countries can cooperate, but I, I, I just like to know. I don't know, so that's why I'm asking. But uh, how much this kind of cooperation has been uh, established between these two countries? Uh, and Prime Minister Kishida is going to Germany to uh, have a, a meeting with uh, 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 Chancellor uh, uh, right, uh, Schultz uh, in a few days, I understand. And they talk yes. about economic security issues. Yes. And what do you expect from their uh, uh, meetings uh, in Germany to be uh, conducted in a few days? And finally, just one point. You talked about regional economic uh, regional trade agreements is a very important uh, framework uh, to uh, secure economic security. And I just wonder if Germany or the EU is interested in joining CPTPP, uh, Comprehensive and Progressive uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, which is a very high level, high quality or high level uh, regional trade agreement. Thank you very much. Yeah, Professor Wata, these were uh, difficult questions, <laughs> um, uh, so I will, I will try to tackle them uh, one after, after the other. Uh, first, starting um, with um, how long will geopolitical tensions last? Um, my answer would be we should, um, as much as we can, intensely work on reducing these tensions um, by our diplomatic work. Um, and if we are successful, that's wonderful. Um, but we have to prepare also for um, a time when we are not so successful in reducing the tensions or even new tensions uh, arise. Um, so I think the, the, the great hope that we had in the 90s that um, after the fall of uh, the, the Soviet bloc and the end of the Cold War, um, uh, in general, geopolitics would become calmer and would become more um, uh, foreseeable. Um, we have to face the, the, the fact that this is no longer the case and mm -hmm. that now the geopolitical tensions are rising. So the conclusion can but not be and say, oh, anyway, we can't do anything. Uh, geopolitical tensions will get worse in the future. We should do everything to work against them. And that I think Germany and Japan and G7 partners and the European Union are heavily working on this. But we have to be prepared um, and we have to deter those countries who are um, uh, trying to revise the existing international order. So my answer would be um, we have to be prepared for the, case, for the worst case and we have to work intensively to improve uh, the situation. But that means for economic security terms that we, because economic security measures cannot be taken uh, short term, we will have to continue to uh, ensure the economic security. So even if for a while um, the international uh, situation, as we all hope for, will be less tense, um, I think we should not lower our economic security shield. Your second question, um, uh, how do we best balance our China policy? Um, that is exactly the question that uh, the, the German government um, asks, has answered in a quite long, uh, almost 80 pages document on, on, on China. Um, if I have to reduce it in, in a few lines, um, the, the, the question is that we are, or the, our, our basic answer is that we are continuing to cooperate with China wherever possible, but that we are also uh, seeing that the risks have been growing, um, both politically, or let me say the differences have been growing politically, and the economic risks, economic risks have been, has been, has been, have been uh, more prominent uh, than in the past. So we have to um, prepare um, avoiding these risks or diminishing them, but without uh, uh, 
cutting off our ties with China. That's not at all uh, in our interest. So we con keep, uh, continue with the political dialogue. We continue um, to trade with China. We continue to invest in, in China. But uh, with the, the, the strong, uh, con or strong uh, feeling uh, in, in, in the background that um, there are also risks that have to be taken uh, uh, care of. And that's why um, or the German companies um, are diversifying, uh, trying to reduce one-sided dependencies um, and tries to establish um, new partnerships um, uh, with, with other countries. Uh, third, uh, the position of private companies uh, in economic security. Um, as an overarching concept, I think it's a, a government task or a path of legislation um, to uh, set the right framework for economic security. And we cannot not expect every individual private company mm -hmm. to have a full-fledged uh, view on economic security questions. Um, so that's a, a guidance and a, a framework, a legal framework that the, 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 the country, the government, has to provide for and where we have to work on an international uh, level in cooperating between G7 partners and, and far beyond that. Um, but uh, what, what we have to ask the private companies to do is taking risks seriously into account. So if, if risks are obvious, also the private companies have to work against that. They cannot expect always the government to, to uh, tackle risks or um, in, in case these, these uh, risks materialize, then um, take over the, the burden of, of that. So we, ex we have to expect the companies um, for example, when it comes to diversifying their um, supply chains, but also their market strategies, that they uh, take risks into account. We are most willing as governments to give advice on that. Um, but uh, yeah, awareness raising is something that uh, will remain important uh, for, the, for the governments to do. But if, I'm, if, I, if I see the developments now, I think the awareness level of existing risks is growing also mm -hmm. among the companies. Mm -hmm. And there is c quite a good dialogue ongoing on these questions between the government and the, the companies. Um, the fourth question, um, German-Japanese cooperation, how much has already been established? Um, we, we had already quite good instruments um, in the past, um, for example, our energy partnership, for example, the political uh, dialogues that we constantly had since decades uh, with uh, Japan. But now with having established a new format on a very high level, government consultations, meaning that the two leaders of the government, prime minister on the Japanese side and the chancellor on, on the German side, now meet regularly, be accompanied by the most important ministers, ministers for economy, foreign affairs, um, uh, for for uh, uh, defense, uh, um, for um, uh, digitalization, and so on, means that we can now we have a much better institutionalized framework to exchange views um, uh, on these questions and develop common strategies. And that's exactly what we are doing. So um, I can tell you, in the three years that I'm here. Uh, in, in Japan, we had really a very in extent, uh, in, uh, in intensive exchange of delegations um, from the high political level to the uh, working level. And um, all the questions I've, I've mentioned in my presentation are really intensively being worked on between government institutes, between ministries, but also between think tanks and political parties. Um, so we have really um, intensified our cooperation in the in the last years to a level which we I think we never had in history before and and that's uh, that's a clear signal that both sides um, um, appreciate very much um, the importance of the other side but also both sides have the trust um, that we can develop solutions uh, together um, CPTPP um, and a possible accession in in the case of um, uh, of Europe, uh, it could only be uh, an EU accession because trade 
uh, policies are uh, no longer in the sovereignty of the EU member states, um, and um, uh, but in the in the uh, realm of the Brussels institutions. So that is a question you would have to ask in one of the next brown bag lunches, the EU <laughs> ambassador. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, the ambassador, uh, uh, for your uh, respond, uh, response. Uh, Dr. Professor Urata, do you have any the, uh, further comments uh, about his answer? No, no, okay. no, no. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. The, uh, now we'd like to uh, move on to the uh, question and answer session. We have already several questions from the audience. Uh, yes, I'd like to pick up the uh, uh, first question about the uh, energy uh, policy, especially nuclear power policy. Uh, the question is that uh, uh, how Germany is going to do with nuclear power. And uh, I believe that uh, you stopped the uh, nuclear power energy uh, two years ago, uh, according to the energy policy. But uh, uh, yes, another uh, question is said that uh, uh, the, here in Japan, this is one of key issues. Uh, how to the, uh, the deal with the uh, energy security and climate policy uh, without any, uh, nuclear power. Do you have any uh, comments on this? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Zaburi, um, for picking exactly this question as the, as the first one. Um, uh, the decision um, to move out of nuclear, en uh, nuclear energy has been taken in Germany already many years ago, and that was in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I think uh, the experience of um, uh, the, the triple catastrophe here in Japan um, and uh, the, the, the problems with the, the uh, nuclear reactor in, in Fukushima, Fukushima Daiichi, um, were for sure uh, an important element in this uh, decision, uh, general decision taken um, to um, go out of nuclear energy. And in fact, yes, uh, the last uh, four reactors have um, ended um, their power production uh, uh, last year. Um, so the, the general uh, policy in, in Germany has been uh, to move away from nuclear um, uh, energy uh, and in, in enhance the uh, uh, percentage of um, or the part that, that uh, renewable energy plays in the in the primary power production, we have now reached uh, more than 50 percent um, of energy production through renewables, and the intention of the government is to increase that um, further and reach um, 80 percent uh, renewable in renewables in, in power production. Uh, in the future. So uh, what are the arguments for this? The, the, the one argument has always been the security, and that was uh, with the background of the havaric, uh, havary of um, the uh, um, uh, reactor in, in Fukushima. So is um, uh, nuclear power really safe enough, uh, or um, uh, can we really technically control it 100% uh, and are, is, is a possible risk of um, uh, um, a reactor going out of control is that is that a barrier risk? So that that has been a strong argument in the decades before already. Um, now one of the stronger arguments, even I would say, is that um, if you take into account the overall costs, including long-term storage, um, nuclear power is not cheap, and it's not um, enhancing energy security because. Um, both Germany and Japan are not producers of uranium. Yes. So we have to import the nuclear fuel um, and uh, we have to um, bear long-term quite high costs for that. So there is a comparable um, advantage uh, for the renewables because renewables make us more independent from energy imports uh, because the wind and the, s the solar or um, other sources as geothermal, we, we have them available in the country and can use them. Um, and the second is that long term, um, also we expect the renewables um, to be um, uh, even cheaper in the future. There is, there is, this, uh, there is definitely a question um, when, when, you are, when we are strongly reliant on renewables, how do you equalize uh, peaks and lows? Uh, um, uh, so power storage will be um, a question, 
Um, and also in Germany, um, uh, research is ongoing on nuclear fusion that might be a, a much safer and cheaper solution uh, in, in the long run. There is a debate in Germany whether um, uh, we should return to uh, the use of nuclear power. This is not something which is completely uncontested. But um, for the time being, I, I don't see uh, uh, any movement that would lead to a majority in parliament reintroducing nuclear power. Thank you very much. The, uh, in your comment, uh, I heard that uh, uh, the geothermal <laughs> power. I think that is uh, one of the uh, nice components to uh, cooperate with Japan and Germany because we have uh, many hot springs on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Japan is obviously very privileged uh, yeah. in, in many forms. You have geothermal, yeah. but Japan also has um, a very long coastline. Mm. So for offshore wind, I know mm. there are other problems in, in Japan. as very steep coasts which have to be tackled with the floating solutions. But um, all in all, the, the coastline of Japan is very long, whereas the coastline in Germany uh, is rather short, and we have it only we have only a coastline in the in the very north. So every um, uh, power that is produced by offshore wind parks has to be then transported through the country um, from the north, whereas in Japan, um, offshore wind parks can be um, uh, dispersed all over uh, on all sides of Japan, and so you would not lead these long uh, power transport uh, lines, power grids that we would need in, in Germany. So um, th there are a lot of fields where we can work together technically. I think what's ongoing is um, uh, working together on the better use of hydrogen, mm -hmm. uh, bo both for storage and for um, uh, immediate power driving, um, um, but also in, in, the, in the fields of, uh, of uh, renewables, um, wind energy. There are many fields where German and Japanese um, scientists and companies can, can work together and develop solutions together. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, then uh, let's move on to the uh, questions uh, about China. Uh, there has been a, a boycott of Japan, German cars in the Chinese market. Is the uh, German government taking any measures against such risks in the Chinese market? Yes, that, such kind of the, uh, yes, uh, boycott program is that uh, the common uh, interest for the Japan, uh, Germany, and uh, also the uh, the Chinese EVs question. Uh, what do you think about the EU uh, countervailing uh, duty on Chinese EV, EVs? Yes, it's, it's a very uh, disputing the <laughs> topics in Germany. Uh, so, uh, do you have any uh, comments on two questions? Yeah. Um, as regards um, German cars in China, um, I, I think we have to clarify uh, here, um, most of the German cars or cars of German brands uh, that are um, sold in China are produced in China. So it's not uh, that we would um, produce the cars in Germany and ship them over to China, but most of them uh, expect uh, a few models, uh, mainly of the premium line, uh, most of the of the cars are um, produced in China, so they are Chinese products um, uh, done with German technology, and um, uh, in, in so far um, also uh, Chinese um, workforce is is strongly uh, um, in, in involved in producing these cars. Um, these companies pay taxes to uh, Chinese. Um, uh, to the Chinese authorities and so on. Um, so the, the, these, um, these cars, um, uh, or many German car companies have invested in China, as Japanese companies have done, too. Um, and uh, so I don't really see that uh, China would have any interest in boycotting these cars that have mainly been produced in, in China. There have been discussions on tackling um, uh, imports that, that uh, of these premium um, model cars, um, and then we would have to react to that. But um, mainly, I don't, I don't see that the Chinese would have an, uh, the Chinese government might have an interest in, in really boycotting 
um, um, our our cars that are produced there. But um, when it comes to to EVs, there there is a serious discussion now uh, whether these electric vehicles produced in China have been subsidized in a way that uh, affords uh, higher, tax, uh, higher tariffs from the European side. As you know, the European Commission has now introduced uh, these tariffs, but uh, negotiations and talks are ongoing between um, the uh, European Commission and, and the Chinese uh, authorities um, on uh, how, uh, um, what measures would be, have to be taken by the Chinese side so that these tariffs can be lowered again. Um, and the federal government um, has very clearly expressed um, our uh, intention and our interest that a solution, a fair solution, um, is found here. So we don't want to enter into a trade war with China. We want fair competition. And there, when, where we have the feeling that the trade uh, is not fairly organized, um, then uh, we demand that the Chinese government is taking the necessary measures for that, and that uh, is something also we support. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yes, the time is running now, so the, uh, let me pick up the last question about uh, diplomacy. <laughs> yes, uh, I have the two questions about diplomacy. The one is, uh, uh, I'd like to listen to your view on the relationship between UK and Germany. Uh, Selected from the Labour Party, uh, Surima has become the new Prime Minister of UK, yes. So uh, do you have any the, uh, the expectation for the two countries' relationship uh, between uh, Germany and the UK? Uh, this is the first question. The second question is that uh, yes, this is uh, written in Germany, so the, uh, maybe you can see <laughs> directly there. Uh, but uh, anyway, the, uh, Robert Habeck uh, visited to China. Uh, so. Uh, the, do you have any the, uh, impact uh, about such kind of the, uh, political uh, dialogue uh, between uh, Germany and China? So uh, could you respond to the two questions? Yes. Um, first, UK, yes, we have seen that uh, the, the recent elections in the UK have brought about an, an overwhelming victory for the Labour Party and the new Prime Minister Stammer. We have seen with uh, great pleasure, I have to say, that the uh, um, new um, uh, foreign minister of uh, the United Kingdom has uh, taken his first visit to Berlin and has um, um, had very intense talks uh, there. So um, we are welcoming that and, and we intend to work very closely with the new British government. I think that's what I can say from Japan on, on UK. And as regards um, uh, the, the high-ranking policy and economic dialogue with, with China. I think this is something that we are interested in continuing. So our um, economic minister, Mr. Habeck, as mentioned, has just been uh, in China. Um, and um, so when we are having these high-level dialogues, we are um, focusing both on the chances of cooperation, but we are also focusing on those questions that need improvement from our side. And as I have said, and, and the, the, the economic minister has made this very clear during his um, uh, visit to China, we see a, a necessity for further um, market opening, um, for a fair treatment of German companies, also in public tenders, um, and um, that, that we also see uh, in, in, in areas and, uh, that, that we are not operating, or our companies cannot operate on a level playing field with the Chinese companies. And, and this is also questions that we are mentioning in, this in these dialogues that we're having with the Chinese side, the points where we demand um, improvements um, when it comes to competition. Okay, thank you very much. The, uh, Professor Ouellette, do you have any final comments? No? Okay. Okay. Uh, now it's time to close the seminar. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador von Gertze uh, and Professor Urata, for your uh, presentation and the comments. Uh, thank you very much for your participation in our BBL seminar today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.